Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 It is Tuesday, September 26th and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Pravi in the media, the practical word study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing and how was your Monday? Yes, the hardest day of the week is now finished and we're getting into the meat. It is Tuesday. Uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead, leave a like and comment below to build our community. Just super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up, support each other each and every day. Uh, this is this week's Sunday message title is Learn From Me testify with an exclamation mark right testify so uh it it is uh it's tuesday i am happy well for me it's still monday but uh to be on the tuesday podcast you know you know i get so confused every day because i'm i'm doing the podcast for the next day like it's monday afternoon right now and I'm doing the podcast for Tuesday. And I keep saying, it's Tuesday. Welcome September 26th. It's Tuesday. And then when, whenever I'm like uh, out with my friends, I'm like, wait, wait, what day is it right now? And I'm getting so confused on what day I'm actually in. So yes, it is a wonderful Tuesday for everyone out there who's listening to this uh, over there in Asia. And it'll be Tuesday for those that listen to this tomorrow in the Western countries, right? So I hope everyone is having uh, an awesome week thus far. And of course, it is a week to testify, right? Tell others about the word or this history. A lot of different stories or testimonies all of us have. And I know that uh, some of us, we have the stories. We have the testimonies. The only difference is uh, we're just not ready to say the testimonies. I'll talk a little bit about about that later. But I had some funny things that happened to me this morning. Okay. Now, and there's something that happens all the time. I just never thought it was funny until I thought to myself, it's like, you know what? I bet you most parents are not like my parents. Okay. So how so? Well, uh, this thing happens to, with me and my parents all the time. Okay. So please let me know if your parents are like this or not. Okay. But maybe it's an Asian parent thing. I don't know. So, okay. So I'm on the toilet. All right, so, you know, we all go to the toilet. This is, you know, I'm not, this is not going to be toilet humor. I'm not going to talk about, like, sounds or stuff like that or smells. I'm just going to talk about I'm on the toilet, okay? I'm on the toilet doing my business, minding my business. Why? Because that's what you do on the toilet. It's a peaceful, quiet time. You do, you got to go do your business, right? So, it's really interesting because like, whenever, um, you know, it's, it's quite obvious when someone's in the bathroom because the light is on and the door is closed and locked and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. But when my parents find out it's me in the toilet, they don't do it with each other. When they find out it's me on the toilet, like they'll say, they'll like start off with, uh, is that you? Is that you, Sky? And I'm like, yes, it's me. You know what I mean? But they keep talking to me through the door. I think it's so annoying and so uncomfortable, right? That I'm doing my business, but I have my mom or my dad talking to me through the door while I'm doing my business. It's so annoying that I can't do my business. It's so uncomfortable. I can't do my business, right? And and what's, what makes it even worse, they talk through the door. So if they're talking through the door, I can't hear them properly. So they have to, I have to keep saying, what? What? And they're like, you know, they have to keep repeating what they're saying over and over again. And you know what? I'm trying to be a good son. So, you know, I try not to be rude. I try not to be, you know, in the beginning, I'm just like, I'm like, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But when it goes on for like way too long, because I could just, like, I don't understand why you would just stand outside the door and talk to me while I'm on the toilet, right? So, you know, when it gets too annoying, I get totally into teenager mode. I'm like, go away, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just like, in my head, I'm just like, why are you still talking to me? When you know I'm doing, like, I don't want to talk to anyone when I'm doing my business kind of thing. But yeah, I, I just like, it happened to me this morning. And I'm like, wait, this happens so often. And my question to you guys is, 
Do your parents do the same thing? Is it is it ever like that for you guys or not? Because I'm fig. I think honestly, I think no. I think it's I'm. I have very special parents. I think that they love me way too much, right? But I'm just curious about you guys on what you guys think. But uh, yeah, just let me know because it's it's just so funny when I look at it now. During the time, I'm annoyed, but right when I look at look about it right now, I think it's hilarious, right? So, I don't know. And tell me if you guys, if your parents also have these weird things that they do to you, right? And that you'd be like, wait, do other parents do this too? Put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear uh, if any of you guys have those types of experience too. Now, uh, it's uh, Tuesday in Asia, but Monday over here, but on, on Wednesday. So I just got two days left before I leave for Atlanta. I'm excited, super excited just to get away, just get away for a bit. But what makes it even more exciting, and this is something that I think that we can learn more and more when it comes to managing guys and stuff. It's just, it's so exciting when you have a ton of guys that get together. Like the amount of testosterone in that one room, it just, it changes everything everything like dynamics change right so many things happen at the same time and honestly i think it's it's more biological because you have alpha males beta males and you have people like all coming together and this just like like all this like like sparks and electricity are flying everywhere and uh it just becomes this i'm gonna tell you this it becomes this harmonious time of laughter and fun and then on top of it we have competition and pride on the line it's it's so uh i would say it's one of these most it's like it's such a great experience for a guy to have these types of experience going traveling to somewhere else you're going with the purpose to win a trophy which is great competition and pride on the line there before it happens we're making fun of each other we're like we're trash talking and stuff like that and it's just funny and and like you got to be there. Like, guys will understand what I'm talking about right now because some of the stuff we talk about, um, most likely in public, you'd be like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. But we talk about stuff like there's no there's no boundaries or lines. It's hilarious how like, you know, they call it locker room banter. Like, it just happens. We just talk like it's it's funny. It really, really is. So, you know, I love these kind of events. I'm super happy to be going and uh, this uh, soccer event has happened three years in a row already in three different cities. It went to Houston. It was L.A., Houston, and then now in Atlanta. So maybe in the future we can have one in Canada. That would that'd be kind of cool. At least a volleyball one because uh, renting courts is a lot easier and stuff like that too. But super great. It's just a great outlet for guys. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a time of brotherhood, camaraderie. I love it, right? So I am super excited, but also... Uh, I think I'm a little bit nervous too. I'm nervous at the same time because uh, it's a huge event, a ton of people, and uh, it's competition. You know, you're getting, you get that nervous vibe before you you compete with other guys uh, for a trophy and stuff. And you know, so and also I'm gonna stay there a little like extra, like an extra week, probably yeah, a little bit over a week extra, and. Um, Hopefully, we're going to have like an, an, an event with newcomers over there. Because, you know, you, you guys saw in the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, man cave. George is doing well. They're going out and evangelizing. They're meeting people. It's really, really cool out there. So they're really running really hard. And I wanted to uh, help out. Not really help out, but just when you have extra bodies there, there's more you can do, right? So uh, I think we're going to try to plan an event just to hang out with the newcomers, have some fun. And I think, you know, for me at, at my current stage too, I don't know what it is yet. Um, uh, they they kind they're like, oh, what about lecturing? I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to lecture. So I, personally, I would rather enjoy the time with newcomers and get to know them better. And I don't know. It could either be that I'm super physical and just want to have fun, or um, maybe I'm just not ready or comfortable yet to lecture yet again. But uh, I think uh, both are good things. I, there could be a lecture, but I do think hanging out with newcomers, having fun with them is a really, really good thing. Like That's exactly what I do over here in Canada. I just hang out with the guys here. They're all campus. They're all less than half my age, right? And we just have fun, right? So I enjoy that time with the guys here too. So um, this week's message, you know, this week's message is great, right? It's about testifying. The great direction. So, you know, here's the thing that it, it you know, to do something practical for this week's message, you know, practical word study. Uh, what is more practical than actually testifying? So we do have a listener who will be sharing her testimony of how she gained her, her first love. So she was inspired by this week's message 
And once she heard this week's message, she right away made a recording. So I will be playing her testimony in the, in uh, the Practical Word Study. So that's going to be kind of fun too. You get to listen to another listener too. And if you guys out there, if you guys also want to testify, especially in this week of giving testimony, go ahead, send me an audio file. would love to hear it. Uh, the only thing that I, I, I ask of you guys is like, yeah, we just don't need, you know, we're talking to members, so we don't have to spell out like lectures or what it means or Sunstein's mission and stuff. Like that's the only thing that uh, only advice I give is like you're talking to us, right? To other members. So you don't have to say like, oh, and then I realized da 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 da, right? Like Sunstein is th- this mission kind of thing, right? It's more of you're talking more candidly with us, right? With other members too. So uh, I really enjoyed her testimony. So you guys are going to hear that in the second part too, right? So like testifying is a direction for this week. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips because I'm uh, on how to testify really well, right? And of course, the, the biggest answer of all things is just practice, right? It's just doing it over and over and over again. It's like this week's message. This week's message is like you get the word. The word is so powerful. The word is so great that is giving you the answers of how to solve the problems in your life. However, you have to repeatedly do it over and over again until you solve the problem, which means that you've got to do it really well before you can solve it, right? So if I were to give you some advice on how to uh, like to start uh, a good, how to make a good testimony. Like the first thing I would do is I'd write out, I write down everything. I just write down stuff like, oh, I was, oh, I remember this. Oh, and this happened and this. I just write all the details, info that I need, and I write it all down. Right. Once you have all that, I would say that from that point on, um, just you know, when you meet with your friends, uh, meet with other people, just try talking to someone about your testimony in a very comfortable manner, not as official like, and you know, not, not an official testimony, but just talking to them normally, candidly, conversation. This was my experience and this is what I felt at that time, right? And I'm going to tell you this, the more you share, the more you realize about your testimony and um, eventually, as you tell your testimony more and more, a deeper and deeper realization will come out of it too, right? And of course, you'll get more organized with your uh, with your testimony and you're going to eventually realize some parts are unimportant that you don't need to, like some details you don't need. And you're going to realize like sometimes like, oh, this feels so long. It means you're putting in stuff that doesn't contribute to your final key point, right? And that's my third thing is you have to, the more you practice and talk about your testimony, uh, you're going to find out that you're going to have a certain realization or a key point that you really want to tell people about. You know what I mean? Like, you know, at the very end of your testimony, it's like, man, God was really with me. God really helped. I realized this about God and God did this for me. Man, it was God that did this, this, this. You know, when you, when you, um, when you finally have your testimony, like kind of fully fleshed out, you're going to have that key point and realization, right? And that is going to be the thing where you're going to, uh, when you realize what that key point, the key testimony trying to give of what God did for you, then from that point on, uh, you're going to be able to build your testimony around that, which means that you're going to find that there's information that is unimportant for that person to know when it comes to that key point you're looking towards, right? So you kind of have to like um, shed the fat of your testimony and not talk about things that are, un- like you don't have to talk about some things, right? It all leads toward what towards what you want to say about what God did for you. That's what the testimony is, right? So even for myself, for what I do for testimonies, like, oh, I practice a lot, right? Because I, whenever I meet newcomers, I share with newcomers before lectures. Uh, I talk with members. I chat and talk. And I, I kind of get to, I get that, I get the feel of uh, how to build my testimony and organize it well so I could tell it in a way that, you know, it becomes like those super powerful ones. Like, you're like, oh, that makes so much sense, right? And... You know, everyone's going to have a different like method or style, how to create and organize a good testimony. But remember that uh, the one thing that you always have to remember is a testimony always leads to God, right? You know, it's a bad testimony when it leads to you and you only talk about what you did, right? Like you, I'm not saying you can't talk about what you did. You could talk about all these things that you do, but in the end, it has to reach the focal point of God. It has to be about God, right? That should be the absolute focal point right? That is like all these things that I did, the mistakes that I made, my feelings that I had. And then in the end, it's like, oh, wow. And God really took care of things. It was God. God, really, and, and at the end of it, people should be able to feel God more than uh, what you did, right? So, you know, at the end, you know, 
uh, the realizations at the end of your testimony is like kind of like that. I realized that God really helped me. Oh, God did this for me and God truly loved me and God took care of me in this way and God did this and God did this and God did this, right? So that's why that and that ending point has to always turn towards God. That's the key point of a testimony. Like that, That's what a testimony is, right? You're testifying to what God has done for you. Right, that's what your testimony is, right? So it, it shouldn't be so focused, heavily focused on the story unless it contributes to the power of the realization at the end. Right? So like I know some stories that I will tell. I'll I, it's pretty long-winded, but it's talking about my struggles. Like I couldn't figure this out. This was so hard. And people will have to be taken through this like emotional roller coaster together with me, like, oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that happened. It's like, can you imagine how someone in the future is gonna tell the story of 2023? That's gonna be an incredible story. The ups and downs, it's I, I like I can't even imagine like just starting from January, the rumors that spread here and there all over America and Europe and Canada and all these other different places. And then February, a lawsuit comes out. March is where there's a, you know, March is where the Netflix and this, like, it's, it just builds into this incredible, like, this anxious feeling like, what, what did that happen? And like, yeah, this happened. No way, man, that's so crazy. And then you just kind of go into this. But in the end, like you give them that light at the end of the tunnel and they're like, oh, and then I saw this, what? And then this, like, what? And then you're like, and God did. And then people kind of like are blown out of their mind. It's kind of like a good story, right? A, a good, you got to be like a good storyteller, right? So for this week, guys, I, I say you guys got to prepare. Prepare your testimonies and prepare it by talking about it. The more you talk about it, the better you'll get at it. And the more you'll realize things about, oh, and I felt this and I felt this. Oh, and this is what God did for me, right? So I hope that everyone really prepares well for this week's uh, this week's uh, testifying. Find a place to testify. And like I said, uh, if you want to testify on, on, on the Morning Star Drive, go ahead, send me your audios. I would love to play them on, on the Morning Star Drive, especially this week when it's time for us to testify. This is the perfect time. If you guys remember any stories of the past, any testimonies you have that will uh, help people get stronger, um, hint, hint to Janice over there. Because I know Janice has a lot of stories. But uh, if you guys have any of those, go ahead and just send me that audio. Would love to hear it. And I'm sure tons of people will be inspired and, and, uh, and inspired and be moved by these stories too. All right. So there it is, guys. The door is always open as always. Now, I, you know, remember last week's poll about uh, how much hope do you see in 2023 now? And it's great because the numbers went up 89% see hope. 89%. And of course, we're still missing 11%. And it's like, oh, how do you know? 8% see it the same and uh, 3% not really seeing any hope, right? So for us, why is it such a good sign that 89% of us see hope? It's not about us bragging and saying, ha ha, we see hope and those 3% see nothing or those 11%. No, it's kind of a, it kind of shows a shift in our mindset throughout this entire year when before we're like, oh my God gosh, what is going to happen? Man, is this going to be another 2008? Oh my gosh, it's something to be put away again. Like all these thoughts are coming in and it's very, very, it was kind of less, well, not kind of, it was less hopeful in the past, right? From March, it was very, very like dark, right? And we're like, what is going on? We don't know what to say. We don't know what to say to other people. We're just kind of stuck like, oh, oh my gosh, it's going to be a hard year. But now, Right now, 89% are seeing hope. We're seeing it. And for me, that is hopeful to see that people are hopeful. And one of the good things it also shows us is like uh, the 3% that are really struggling, it means that 89% can take care of 3%. There's less people that we need to uh, take care of, less people that we need to, that are, that are struggling, right? That we can focus that now, how much easier is it for us to help others when we have hope, when we see the good, right? And it's so true. Like the 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 tide is changing in 2023, right? Just looking at that one poll, the tide is absolutely changing. And it's kind of like this week's message. The word is the solution. And the word has been given to us constantly over and over. Learn from me, learn from me, learn from me. And it has 
changed people's hearts. It has changed people's thoughts. And now that we're hearing the words, it almost feels like we're getting back to what was normal before, right? And I think that the words that we receive, so necessary to remind us of the word that we learn, to remind us of the seals that were broken, to remind us that this is the history of God. And this is why we're able to uh, come back to this position here. So I am super grateful and thankful that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just thankful just to hear the, the news and the results from uh, last week's poll, which leads us into a new poll. So this week's new poll, I was thinking about, you know, uh, someone was sending me this article that there's 100 days left in uh, 2023. Of course, now there's like 96, 97 days left in 2023. So with the three months that we have left, let's just say three months, because we're already here at the end of September. Uh, with three months left in the year, uh, what do you plan to do the most, right? What do you plan to do the most? And, and I, I think that's something that um, we, what we try to strive for, right? So these are all things that maybe we're going to do one or two, maybe all of these things more. But what, what do you think is going to be your absolute focus for the last three months of the year? Um, number one is evangelism. Two is uh, taking care of others. Three is like testify, lecture, or, you know, preach, like those types of things. Uh, the fourth one is to pray. And then fifth is other. Well, you can comment on these other thing, but with three months left in the year, what are your plans? Like, what are your plans that you really want to focus on for the last three months of this year? So uh, I think it's gonna be quite, quite exciting because people are a lot more hopeful now. We have the energy and strength to go and do something about it, right? So, you know, some of you can just start work on it right now by testifying. Send me an audio, guys. I will play it here and you'll have 18 countries that will listen to that testimony too. All right. Uh, so here's the thing. I had a, I had a funny, uh, not funny. I had an interesting conversation with a friend of mine. Right. And the question was like, you know, we're so hopeful. We're happy and all these other different things. And we're just talking about the roller coaster of 2023. And, you know, it was so terrible in the beginning. Then how much more hopeful it is now. But we still have three months left. Right, we have three months left and three trials left that we're we haven't got any results for. We have Sunseam's trial, we have like KJS and the accomplice trial for aiding and abetting, and then we have like also KJS she has her like money embezzlement trial at the same time too. None of them are done yet. Like we haven't got any results for that either. So you know we were we were talking we're like man we got two thoughts in our head. Less than a hundred days left before the end of the year. So um, there's like two thoughts we have. Like it means like with three months left, we have a lot to look forward to. More good news. More things are going to come out. More things are going to reveal as it has been over the last couple of months. And it gets more and more exciting. Like, wow, this came out. That came out. Oh, I'm so happy about this. Wow, this is, this is so great. But also on the flip side, we're like, but the year isn't over. So we still need to brace ourselves, right? Like we can't just think to ourselves, it's like everything is going to be uphill from now on. Satan, you know, he's got like three months left to do as to put as much havoc into the system as possible. And that's why we need to brace ourselves. Brace ourselves also knowing that Satan has more in store before the end of the year. So we can't just be thinking too hopeful, like naive, like, guess what? Only good things are going to happen until, until the end of the year. Only good things. Wow. Everything's going to work out in our favor. The year isn't over, guys. And just as God does things strong in the end, Satan is going to do things strong in the end also. So that is something that I think that uh, we have to keep in mind is, yeah, it's, there, there has been a big turn of events where we're looking at things from a different perspective, a different point of view. We're understanding things a lot better now too. However, we have to also understand is uh, on the flip side, right? On the flip side is, yeah, with this last remaining three months, Satan's going to work even harder to make more like worse things happen over and over and over again. And this is why we really need to think uh, think properly at this time knowing that it's not over yet right just as god goes until the end satan goes until the end too but satan goes till six and god goes till seven so we need to wait wait out all the mess of satan and then once that finishes it's god that takes it to seven there too so i hope that all of us will continue to pray don't don't think it's going to be easy from now on i personally think it might get even harder 
over the next couple of months just because, you know, Satan's going to be working that much harder and we have to be, you know, just as we have gained so much more hope, our faith must become stronger so that even if Satan comes in really, really hard, we're okay. We're, we're okay. We're going to be fine with it too. All right. So yeah, that's just kind of like the, something we got to kind of be aware of is it's, it's things are going well right now, but it's not going to be going well the entire time. Satan's going to come. He's going to kick in and try some other stuff on us too. So we have to be that much more careful also. All right. So before we go to the free uh, into the break, just know that today in probably the media, there are a lot of things happened over the past week. Like there's like three or four articles that I'll go over so you guys can get a better of, idea of what is unfolding uh, in, in the media and with Providence, stuff like that too. So I hope that you guys will really, uh, really look forward to that too. Just to get an idea of the things that you need to pray for also. Okay, so there it is, guys. That is uh, the first segment for today. Let's get into the first break of the day. Every day. As the days keep fading up, they keep 
that surrounds me like the air that I breathe. I'm loving you, I live in you. I'm loving you, I live in you. We'll be together like this, live forever loving you. I'm loving you, I live in you. I'm loving you, I live in you. Like the air that surrounds me, like the air that I breathe. I'm loving you, I live in you. I'm loving you. I live in you, we'll be together like this, live forever loving you. All right, so let's get into today's second segment, which is the practical word study we do on every Tuesday. But what better way to put this week's message? What? How do how do we make it more practical? Well, we got to actually testify. So uh, one of our listeners, uh, someone I've known since she was a newcomer, actually, I think I was the one that, did the event that she came to and then she came to Providence. Like, even for me and her, I have a testimony about meeting her for the first time. So what happened was, uh, way back, I'm not sure, in the 2010s maybe, uh, I don't even remember exactly when I did this, I was going to universities and schools doing lectures uh, for like evangelism rallies. And uh, this one time, okay, so this is a situation that I was going through, all right? This is a situation I was going through. So uh, I was working with the campus uh, headquarters, and I was like the national um, lecturer for campus. And I was going around universities and stuff, like giving lectures and doing evangelism rallies. So we went to her school. I forget what school it is too, but we went to her school. And I was doing a lecture, and I was inspired by this um by this lecture I heard about how great God is by understanding how great, how big the planets are. Like the planets, like the sun and the greatest stars, how much bigger are they from us and how it shows the greatness and almightiness of God. Like it, it was something that in my head, it sounded really good. But I'm going to be super honest with you. It For myself, I didn't feel like it came out very well. And even like the campus lecture, like the campus headquarters, they also, like, they thought, oh, it wasn't a very good lecture. It wasn't a very good lecture. And I felt it. I'm like, you know, I'm someone who takes it personal when it comes to lecturing because I feel like I'm a good lecturer. But it was, I, I, I don't know. It didn't work out. And uh, it wasn't like the other times I did lectures. And those other times, it was so much better. Like, the reactions and the people there. So I did this whole thing. And by the end of it, like, I wasn't feeling good. They weren't feeling good. But uh, this listener, her name is Higyeong. She came up to talk to me. and She speaks English too. And I think she was talking to me because she was super interested in missions work. And like, it was so weird to me that, uh, well, it was so weird because I felt it was such a terrible lecture. But she came up to me and talked to me and she got connected and she passed and everything and she's doing well even right now. And her English is really good too. Like you'll listen to the audio. She, you won't think that she's like Korean, Korean, right? But you know, she's also raised in Guatemala, which means she speaks Spanish too. But either way, so um, I was so shocked. And the pr after praying about this, like, God, I had such a bad lecture. I don't know what's going on. A couple people talked to me, including he Gyeong. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on, right? I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, God. I repent. I could have done so much better. But it was so interesting because that was like one of the only schools where I was able to do like a direct connection to the word and the Bible and then this person passed and stuff. And the one thing that I realized is, is like, hey, it's not you. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're so into the, I got to do a good lecture. And if I do a good lecture, I feel good about it. Then, then it's a good lecture. But the reality is it, it brought me back to, it's all about God. It's God that inspires. It's God that gives the, you know, the Holy Spirit that gives the inspiration. We can only do as much or the best that we can. But in the end, it is God that reaches out to these people's hearts. And after doing such a bad lecture, but someone actually connected to the word and passing, that for me was so humbling because we're always into the, oh, you have to do this well, this one. And, you know, it's not like I didn't prepare. It just didn't happen the way that I thought it would. But so interestingly, it came out that there was a person that came out and passed from that lecture. So uh, that's my testimony about meeting with her, too. I wasn't in, like, I'll tell you something else that happened, too. During that time, during that exact same time is uh, I was struggling, right? This was like, uh, this is when my Korean wasn't that good. I was going to Sunday services. 
It was all in Korean, and I couldn't understand most of it. Like 90%, I was struggling. Like, what is this, what, what is this message about? And I was reading the English uh, transcripts and stuff, and I sent a letter to Sun Seam, like, Sun Seam, is it okay if I just uh, do Sunday service at home, please? Like, I can barely understand the Korean sermon. I can't understand it. I'm reading the sermon while the sermon is going on. Sunseem, it's really, really tough for me. Is it okay you give me permission for this? And I got back, uh, like this is exactly the same time during um, when I met Hee-young too. I got a response from Sunseem and his response was, you have no idea the power of the pulpit. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, ah. Okay. And he's like, no, go to service. You have no idea how powerful it is to be there with, you know, at the pulpit when God is there speaking. And I'm just like, okay, 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 okay. Okay. So I wasn't even in a great mood at that time too. But it, it was such a humbling experience to go through that type of thing. But actually having someone inspired in some way and they actually come to this history. So uh, this is He Gyeong. I hope you guys enjoy this. This is uh, her testimony about her first love. So everyone take a listen. Hello, I am Ju He Gyeong from Korea. I gathered the courage to record this testimony because I want to share my journey of finding my first love. Before the Sunday sermon about first love was delivered last week, I was inspired and began to think about my first love. I was born in Korea, but at a young age, my family immigrated to Guatemala. I began to attending to the former faith church in Guatemala. In my former faith, I was someone who eagerly pursued a life of faith. Many American missionaries came to Guatemala, and during vacations, I served as an interpreter for them, accompanying them on mission trips and translating between Spanish and English or Korean and English. In my life, there were two big turning points, and one of them happened during a mission trip in Tijuana, Mexico, when I was 16 years old. And of course, the another one happened when I met the Providence. Anyways, while I was praying in Tijuana, I saw Jesus. He was carrying a cross, and his body was covered in blood. I couldn't help but have a meltdown in tears, confessing how sorry I was. I felt so bad that Jesus had to carry the cross for the world. I said, Jesus, you should be in too much pain. And then I applied big bandages to his wounds and said, I wish your wounds heal and not hurt you anymore. After this encounter with Jesus, my life totally changed. I was more dedicated to church activities than anyone else. What's even more amazing was that every time I prayed, God responded. God always showed His presence in my life, sometimes through a Holy Spirit's fire, sometimes through visions, and sometimes through His voice. However, there was a problem. When I couldn't feel God, it was difficult for me. When there was no response, I became easily disheartened. My faith was based on emotions, grace, and feelings. There was no truth, no word. Sun Seng Ni once said that grace is like flesh and the word is like bones. My bones were weak, and I believe that this is the limit of the former faith. It might still have grace, but not the words. That's why so many people lose faith when they become older in the former faith. And then, here we go, I met the Providence. As I listened to the stories of Sun Seng Nim, especially about loving Jesus, I was shocked. This is how I should love God, I said. I had always been accustomed to God coming to me first, responding to me. But Sun Seng Nim, he loved God first, understood God's simjong, heart and mind first, and truly loved God in his daily life. It was truly shocking that we as a human beings can love Almighty God like a real bride. Although I had claimed to love Jesus so much, I realized that I made Jesus have unrequited love for me because I did not know. The most shocking thing was that Jesus was still carrying the cross not because of the world in general, but because of me. 
It was the cross of love. I wanted to make sure Jesus would never have to carry the cross of love again for me. I mean, how would I confess such love without Sanseng Nim's teachings? The day before the passing ceremony, I wrote a Thanksgiving letter. While writing the letter, I remember the bandage confession I made to Jesus when I was 16. I had totally forgotten about it. But I realized that heaven remembered that one moment and called me to providence to fulfill that promise. Furthermore, I came to understand that the only way to heal Jesus' wounds is not me just eagerly pursuing a life of faith in church or just praying. The core was love. It had to be through the bandage of love, nothing else. We did not come to Providence to become rich or famous or successful in life. All of us were chosen to fulfill the purpose of creation, and that's love. These were, this is our first love, my first love. I really wanted to make God happy by loving Him like Son Sekmi loves God. Unfortunately, just like the Sunday's message said, I had been losing that first love. I had been ignoring God in my life, to be honest. I was bright, but just at church or just when I prayed. I was mute to them most of the time. I used to always converse, sick while walking or studying or working, etc. I would even prepare extra spoon on the table and made a seat for Jesus when I ate. I will always ask first to God before making any decisions. That's how Sonsegi loves Jesus, and he still does inside of a jail. I ignore the heavens most of the times, and I realize that this act is making heaven have one-sided love for me again. So I repented. There is no one in this world who can teach how to love God and how to live together with God like Sun Sing Nim. I truly, truly admire Sun Sing Nim. I am so thankful that God sent Sun Sing Nim to us as an example of how to love God. So everybody should be so proud of knowing the best secrets of making the Almighty God happy. That itself makes us successful beings. Let's not give up in loving God. We have something new with us, and we are all His witnesses to His love for God. Thank you. And thank you so much, He Young, for that wonderful testimony. Uh, I, I hope that uh, everyone received inspiration and uh, moving of the hearts from this testimony too. And I hope it moves you guys too to testify this week. It doesn't have to be here on the Morning Star Drive. Right? It could be at, uh, you know, talking to your friends, uh, talking to other members. Because, you know, testifying is not just for newcomers. It's also for members, right? So, you know, find a place to do it. And if you are inspired, yes, go ahead and record yourselves and leave something over here so that uh, other members around the world can be inspired by your testimonies too. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is today's second segment, uh, the practical word study of an actual testimony for this week. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed it. Please leave uh, a comment below for Hee Gyeong. Uh, that's, you know, it's, it's it's not easy for people to just to talk in front of a ton of people. So she was very brave for what she did there too. Okay. So uh, let's get into the second break of the day. Just cool. 
Seven on earth, cause I'm with you. Ain't nothing better when we live forever. When we make us to be one true love, birds of a feather fly together. And it's just like that. Give you my love, cause I don't hold back. Call me your love, cause I know you got stacks. This love is real, cause we got it like that. Sandy walks on the beach summertime. Feel the heat, that's a love paradise. Holding hands, cool breeze, cloud nine. Make heaven together with you and I. Sandy walks on the beach summertime. Feel the heat, that's a love paradise. Holding hands, cool breeze, cloud nine. Make heaven together with you and I. Hey. You wanna live with happiness and hope. You gotta live with the one you love the most. And don't forget that even on darkest roads, stress by the Lord. And grab your heart, control your tears. A pretty paradise right from the start. Oh, oh. Paradise. All the night breaks darkness. You're like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. I'm not alone because living with you is like my paradise. All the night breaks darkness, like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you because you are my only paradise. Together we're the greatest, just like the moon and the stars, we like the night. And I can't wait to see you because you are my only paradise. All the night breaks darkness, like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you because you are. Okay, so let's get into today's final segment, which is, of course, Pravi in the media. We do this every single Tuesday. We get a better idea of what is happening in Korea with the trials and everything else so that we can pray better and we know the situation much better, too. Today, ton of stuff that came out over the last week. A lot of things have transpired, uh, things I didn't even know about uh, either. But there was another trial that just finished, right, with uh, two CGM executives and they are they were found guilty of attempting to destroy evidence of Sunseem's sexual assault, right? So these are two executives. Uh, I believe one is no longer in Providence and the other one is still there. But uh, I, I'm not sure exactly, so I'm not going to be definitive about that. But what happened was on the 22nd, uh, which is just like three days, three, four days ago, uh, the 12th Criminal Division of the Daejeon District Court sentenced two people. There was a director of the External Cooperation Bureau of CGM, 60 years old, accused of instigating the destruction of evidence, and they got one and a half years in prison, right? The second person, uh, 36 years old, deputy director of the External Cooperation Department, he was uh, brought to trial on the same charges, sentenced to one year in prison, two years probation, and 120 hours of community service. And um, the basic difference was, well, you had the main person in charge was the one telling everyone that they should, you know, get rid of all the evidence, get rid of the phones and stuff. And I, I do think they went to pressure Maple, right? So I, and this, this plays a huge role as a huge obstacle to uncovering the substantive truth. And that's why the guilt was high for the first person that's a year and a half in prison, right? But the second person, uh, they took into consideration that this person is guilty, however, it is less because they are just participating in accordance with what the older director instructed. So that's why it was like that too. So this is why, you know, this has to do with Maple and trying to coerce her into not, you know, taking this public or getting rid of her phone or whatever it was like this, right? So it's also known that, um, in, uh, that from like March to mid-April of last year, they held a video conference. Remember, last year was when Maple and uh, the other girl from uh, Australia actually came forward on March 16th. Remember, they had that big, big press conference, right? And then it is known from March to mid-April last year that uh, these deputy directors held the video conference with key executives of CGM, right? 
and instructed them to replace the cell phone that could serve as evidence in the sexual assault investigation. Right. So this is, you know, this is something that you do need to know is this was not sanctioned by Sunsunim, right? These people, what they were doing. And now I'm not sure exactly what their condition is at the moment, but it is quite heartbreaking. I, I do know one of them and uh, I know them very, very well, too. But it's quite heartbreaking to see this type of thing happen because, you know, this, this are, these are families that are being affected. Yes, we make wrong choices in our life here and there, uh, but, you know, we all pay the price for what we do. And it's something we do need to pray for the families also because, you know, they're going to be struggling over this also. Uh, in second news, uh, the CGM Church Member Council submits a 30,000 signature uh, petition for Sunstein, right? So on the 21st, which means is this is uh, one day before that other trial, uh, the CGM Member Council, right, uh, submitted a petition of a total of 30,000 people to three agencies, including the Ministry of Justice, the Supreme Court, and the Tejon District Court. And the petition states um, that there is a need for an accurate and fair, fair investigation into the abnormal behavior and actions of the complainants who said they suffered sexual harm. And there's a need to investigate and confirm the facts regarding the suspicion of destruction of evidence by the investigators in charge. And, of course, the recusal of... Um, uh, of Sunstein from the first trial court, and it contains three requests, including a citation for the application. So the member council is an emergency response committee representing the CGM, representing CGM, and they are pastors, elders, believers, and they are dealing with uh, Sunstein's legal situation and the, and the media. And the council said that uh, Sunstein is being tried after being indicted on charges of sexual assault, but he is being wrongfully accused due to the abnormal behavior and actions of the accusers, the suspicion of destruction of evidence by the investigators in charge and the unfair prejud prejudicial uh, trial of the first trial court. And they submitted a petition protesting against the damage to the fairness of the pastor's trial and requesting that the trial proceed in a fair and equitable manner, right? Then they appealed um, with the desperate cries and uh, the will of 100,000 believers they request a fair and equitable trial based on facts rather than a media trial based on unfair public opinion manipulation opinion manipulation by the media. So that's the second article. So there is a petition that has gone to those three areas, right? What are they? It's the Ministry of Justice, the Supreme Court, and the Tejon District Court. So great job for uh, all the people that are working on behalf of Sunstein there too. Uh, the third article. Uh, there was a rally that happened in Tegu over the weekend, right? So there was a rally. I thought the rallies were done, but another rally came out and they're calling obviously for a fair trial, just like the other uh, petitions that happened, uh, other protests that happened. So CGM, the member council announced that about 5,000 members of Tegu, Gyeongbuk, and Gyeongnam regions held a rally in front of Dongyang Life Insurance in, uh, in I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's in Tegu. It was at 4 p.m. on the 24th, which means it was on Sunday. They're calling for a fair trial of Sunstein. And this rally took over the baton of the 50,000 person rally in front of Seoul City Hall after, um, that, that's the one that happened in August. And, uh, you know, there, there, this, there's been a ton of these rallies happening and appealing for a failed try, trial. And members said that it, um, yeah, it's, it's the, a lot of these, the members were quoted as saying it reminds people of President Yoon suk Yeol's mention of the damage caused by fake news at the New York Digital Vision Forum on the 21st. And some broadcasting companies that branded Pastor Jung as a sexual assault, uh, someone who does who committed sexual assault by manipulating the contents of the broadcast did not create fake news, but what else? Like, you know, they're like going, come on. If you're going to manipulate it, you're going to make fake news out of it. You're going to take something and make it what it really isn't, right? So, and the trial's not even finished either. So this is something that I think is great. Good job to uh, all the people, the members who did this uh, protest in Tegu. Uh, last but not least, this is this is a quite quite interesting one. I just found this one out too. Is um, uh, KJS, you know, you know, Joan, who is second command of CGM, well, not anymore. Um, she appointed a new lawyer on the day be uh, the day before her first trial, which is quite interesting, right? So KJS, who was arrested on charges of quasi-rape as an accomplice in uh, with Sunstein's sexual corruption case, appointed a new lawyer ahead of the trial. So Today Korea, uh, which is uh, the name of a, a, a news agency, exclusively reported that KJS appointed a new lawyer, Kim Om-yeon, who is 52 years old, uh, 
and a law school graduate, right? And on the 8th, uh, a day before the first trial to be held at 10 a.m. on the 9th, right? So this is uh, this is news that happened a while back, but I guess I'm, I'm just hearing about this now. But the attorney, Kim om Yun is active in the Busan area, and today Korea reportedly called the attorney's office several times regarding the appointment, uh, and but was unable to hear a response. Initially, um, KJS had six lawyers from uh, a large law firm who were in charge of her case, but they all resigned at the same time on May 17th. Right, so this is a while back, and then there was G1 PNP, another law firm, is said to have submitted a letter of withdrawal of designation as the lawyer in charge, leaving only one person, and this is why, uh, in the end, she is uh, the day before her first trial, she actually changed her lawyers. I didn't know that this was happening, so this is kind of old news, but uh, interestingly, yeah, this is the first time I ever heard about it. Yeah, May seventeenth, which is months before, um, the entire six lawyers actually resigned on mass, which means they all together, all six of them at the same time. She got new lawyers and then they have submitted a letter of withdrawal and now she's left with only one person, right? And this person is a law school graduate, right? 52 years old, but, and she's working in Pusan as a lawyer too. So uh, yeah, that's, that's quite interesting news. I'm not sure why it wasn't told in the past or maybe I just didn't see it because it's pretty much old news too. But yeah, since the beginning of her trial, she's had a new lawyer which is very difficult because they're not going to have all the all the facts and all the stuff prepared and ready in one day, right? So uh, it's it's quite uh, it's quite sad to see how things are turning out this way. And of course, you know, inside of our hearts, some of us are like, oh, you know, maybe she deserves that. But you know, I I do think it's something that uh, we have to always look at the human aspect of all these things. And yeah, it's it's a t it's tough. To, to hear all these different things happening, like, you know, the executives in the first article that had to, you know, that are going to prison one year and one and a half years. So I, I, I thought it was something that we have to really uh, not, not, be, not be in the mindset of, oh, I told you so, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Like, I think that's the wrong attitude to have. We should always be in that mind frame of, of love, right? And, you know, we should pray. We should still pray for them, right? Just as Sansim said, pray for your enemies and uh, no, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I, I do think it's something that, you know, who knows? Like this could be, um, instead of hating, this could be one of the things that God is doing to bring them back into the right mindset so that they repent and come back. Do you know what I mean? Like there's so many different things that can happen from this. And we know that in our lives too, a lot of times bad things happen and it brings us back to our senses. We're like, oh, okay, I'm coming back kind of thing, right? So I hope it's something that's very, very similar that um, I hope, and I can only hope for this, but let's pray continuously for even those that came against us, okay? So there it is, guys. That is Pravi in the Media. Hope you guys really enjoyed those four articles. It helps you to pray a lot better too, uh, which means we are here at the end of today's Tuesday podcast. Hope you guys had an amazing time as I did, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw me up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this.